In this second video for chapter six, I just wanted to go through some more examples and some non-examples of isomorphisms. So some group mappings that are in fact isomorphisms and some that are not and why they are not. So make sure that you first watch video 6.1 where we've talked about what an isomorphism is in detail and the conditions that we need to check. And we're going to go ahead and continue checking those details for our first example. This example has two groups, G, which is the set of integers under addition, and G bar, which is the set of even integers under addition. So even integers. And we are trying to prove that they are isomorphic. So first thing we need to do is the mapping. Now this is an example, obviously, of two infinite sets. So our mapping is not going to list out the values and which um, value of G maps to which value of G bar. Instead, we're just going to define phi of X to be 2X for all X in G. Again, every integer, we'll just multiply it by two and that will make it an even integer. Now, is this one-to-one? -one? So we're going to let 2x equal 2y, and then by division, we have x equals y, and that is exactly what we were trying to prove. Remember, we assume that phi of x is equal to phi of y, and then we show x must equal y. Or you can use a and b or l and m, it doesn't matter. Now for onto, we are looking for, for each y that is in g bar, or each g bar in g bar, however you want to say it, there must exist an X in G, so in our original set, our first set, such that phi of X is equal to Y. So essentially what that means is we have to say, let Y equal to X, which means x is equal to y over 2. Now that works just fine, but we also have to say, is that going to be an integer? Well, since y is in fact an even integer, remember we're looking at even integers. When I divide it by 2, I will get an integer. So x will be an integer. So it is on 2. Operation preserving, we need to say that phi, and again, we're dealing with addition, so m plus n is equal to phi of m plus phi of n, or x and y, it doesn't matter what you use. So if I say uh, phi of m plus n is going to be 2 times the quantity of m plus n. Now, breaking that down, obviously I can use the distributive property to say this is the same as 2m plus 2n, and 2m is the same as phi of m, and 2n is the same as phi of n. So this is operation preserving, therefore g is isomorphic to g bar. Let's look at another example. We have G and G bar are both a set of real numbers under addition, and we want to prove that they're isomorphic under a specific mapping. So obviously they would be isomorphic under, say, X equal Y, or phi of X is equal to Y, or phi of X is equal to X. Any of those would work just fine. They're asking specifically for the mapping. And so we're going to say, let phi of X equal X cubed. So is this one-to-one? -one? Remember what we tried to do is we are looking at phi of x equal to phi of y, and then we have to show, does that imply that x equals y? 
So back to the discrete math days, it's an implication. So all I'm going to do is say let x cubed equal y cubed, which would be phi of x and phi of y. And then I'm going to take the cubed root of each side. Uh, whoops, that's y cubed. And what does that give me? x equals y. So yes, this is one to one. Is it on to? Remember, I'm looking for what must, do I have a specific x for each and every y? So I'm really just starting with y equals x cubed, and I'm taking the cubed root of each side, and I'm getting the cubed root of y is equal to x. And then remember, I need to double check, is x going to be a real number? Uh, and just before I continue here, notice I'm not writing out all of the words. So if this were, say, a homework assignment or if this were a test question, you would use more words. You would say, let x cubed equal y cubed. By taking the cubed root of each side, we get x is equal to y. Therefore, uh, this mapping is one to one. So just side note, I'm not doing that just for the sake of time. So this isn't a very, very lengthy video. Okay, back to onto. We have just decided that x is equal to the cubed root of y. My question is, is x a real number? Well, if I'm taking the cubed root, that takes care of that negative problem. Because obviously, if I had a negative value and I'm taking the square root, then that result is not going to be a real number, it's going to be an imaginary number. But if I take the cubed root of a real number, positive or negative, I am going to get a real, and so therefore this is onto. Now let's take a look at operation preserving. Remember, I'm looking at phi of x plus y, and I need it to equal phi of x plus phi of y. So phi of x plus y means x plus y cubed. I'm saying, does that equal phi of x, x cubed, plus phi of y, which is y cubed? Now, obviously, I could go ahead and multiply this out, but hopefully we know that that is not the case. We can't just distribute this. This side on the left is actually x plus y times x plus y times x plus y, and that is not going to give me x cubed plus y cubed because, of course, I would have to FOIL. I would get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and I would take that result times x plus y, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, no, this is not operation preserving. And again, I knew to use addition because we have addition in our definition of the group. So therefore, g is, oops, not isomorphic to g bar. Let's look at one last example involving U10 and U5. And again, when we're dealing with these U's, we are looking at any value less than N, so less than 10 or less than five, and relatively prime to N. So if I look at 10, I'm looking at the value of one, but not two, since two goes into 10, three, not four, five, or six, seven, not eight, and nine. And if I'm looking at u5, in fact, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are all um, relatively prime to 5. So that's the first good news because we only have four elements and because each set has four elements, it's possible that this is going to be an isomorphism. So let's take a look now at each element. So what I need to do is I need to look at each element of this set and in each element, I need to determine the order. So if I am looking at the operation with u, which is essentially mod 10, multiplication mod 10, so I'm looking at one, and then one squared, which is one, and one to the third, which is one, I only get one. So the order of one is one, obviously that's the identity as well. If I look at three, I get three and then three squared, which is nine, and then three to the third, which is 27. Again, mod 10 makes it seven, and then 81, which is one. And that means the order of three is four. 
and then I do the same with 7. I say 7, 7 squared, which is 49, or 9, 7 to the third, which is 243, and then 2,401, and I end up with the order of 7 being 4 as well. And then for 9, I get 9, and then 81, and then I believe 729, but it goes back to 9. So the order of 9 is 2. Now let's do the same for the elements of U5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1 still just generates 1, and in fact is still the identity. 2 is 2, 2 squared of 4, 2 to the third, which is 8, but mod 5 this time, um, 8 would be 3. And then 16 mod 5 would be 1, so that does generate the set. So this is a cyclical set. And that's helpful to know, too, because obviously my first set was cyclical with order 4, and this is a cyclical, a cyclical set of order 4. Um, two, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Three, three squared is nine, which is four. Three to the third is 27, which is two. And then 81, which is one. So the order of three is four. And then I'm looking at four, which is four, and then 16, which is one, and then it goes back to 64, which is four. So four is two. Now, why is this important? Because when I'm doing my mapping, I have to define which elements map to which. So I'm going to say let phi of, and I have to choose each of these values, so phi of 1, phi of 3, phi of 7, and phi of 9. I have to map each of those to elements of the same order. So 1 obviously has to map to 1 down here because they're both of order one. And nine has to map to four because they're both of order two. And for the others, it really doesn't matter which one you do. So I'm going to go ahead and just say that three maps to two and seven maps to three. Now, one to one and on to are fairly straightforward, but what I find a lot of students do is that they don't address them at all. So I can say this mapping is one to one and onto as shown in the mapping because again I'm not going to write all that out but if it's one to one that means for every x there's just one y well I've mapped it that way and if it's onto for every y there is an x well again I've mapped it that way so this seems very silly and trivial, and yet if you don't say that you recognize that this is one-to-one -one and onto, then you're going to lose points for it. So just, you know, humor me and give me a sentence that says you realize that you had to check that, uh, those two properties. Now for operation preserving, because we're looking at the same operation, this is modular multiplication as is this, this mapping, is operation preserving. Because both operations are the same. And then it's usually good to give a for instance. So let's say I'm going to take phi of, choose two values from U10, so three and seven. I need to show down here that that's the same as phi of 3 times phi of 7. So let's just see what happens. Remember that this is mod 10 and that this is mod 5 because obviously that will be important. So 3 times 7 is 21. 21 mod 10 is 1. And so I have phi of 1, phi of 1 is 1. So I need to show that 1 mod 5 is going to be the same as 3 times 7. 
So what is 1 mod 5? Well, can I get 1 mod 5 by taking phi of 3, which is, um, what did I map 3 to? Sorry, I lost track. Which is 2 times phi of 7, which is 3 mod 5. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, which is 1 mod 5, and that's the same as phi of 3 times phi of 7. So I've shown that to be true. So again, I don't have to do every single combination, but I do have to say that it is operation preserving because the operations are the same, and it's usually a good idea to give an example. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at Cayley's theorem.